Good morning, everybody. Um, if you'd like to take your seats. Uh, I'm Anna Taylor. I'm the Executive Director of the Food Foundation. And on behalf of Birmingham Commonwealth Association, Birmingham City Council and the Food Foundation, we are really thrilled that you're here um, uh, and that you're going to spend today with us talking about how we transform the food system um, across the world in the many cities that are represented here. We've, we have representatives today from 20 cities in the room. Um, uh, many have travelled huge distances to get here and we're enormously grateful that you've gone to all of that trouble to come and tell us about what you're doing and use this opportunity to meet other people who are on the same journey that you are on. Um, and uh, I'd also like to just thank you for, for, the, for traveling, uh, for giving your time, and also to thank the team that have been working tirelessly behind the scenes to get today's event off the ground. I won't name them now. There are many people, and, and we're hugely grateful to them for all their, their hard work. Um, my job is to do a little bit of housekeeping. We're not expecting a fire alarm. So if you do hear a fire alarm, please follow the fire exit signs. There are um, exits to the staircases for the assembly rooms on the left and the right. Um, so have a really wonderful day and lo really looking forward to hearing from you all during the course of the day. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, special guest, distinguished guest, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'm Keith Stokes-Smith from the Birmingham Commonwealth Association and we're working in conjunction with the Food Foundation and Birmingham City Council and a consortium of partners for t um, on today's events. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here today uh, on behalf of those organisations, uh, say in partnership with Birmingham City Council and the Food Foundation. Assisting us has been a consortium of local businesses and associations who are very much part of trade and development in Birmingham. However, the next two days are not about us or them. They are about you and your engagement with the very important issues affecting the food and drink supply chain around the world, be that food and drink security or sustainability, the challenges faced by that supply chain, or what you may need to know in order to successfully trade abroad. This event is also about knowledge, knowledge sharing and communication, which I know is particularly relevant to the more than 60 delegates who have traveled thousands of miles to be with us here today from across the world. Please enjoy your time with us. Make your experience a talking point. And let's continue our partnership and collaboration for our common good in support of a healthy and sustainable food economy. I would now like to welcome and invite Birmingham's Lord Mayor, Councillor Maureen Cornish, to open what I'm sure will be an extremely interesting and thought-provoking event. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all and welcome. Welcome to Birmingham, a city alive with spirit of the Commonwealth, of togetherness and boldness for the opportunities ahead, which we are launching here on the eve of the Commonwealth Games. It is my honour to launch the Food and Drink event and Commonwealth Food Futures Summit here in the UK House, where we will work together over these two days to explore new opportunities, develop collaboration, to tackle wicked global problems, and celebrate our united commitment to building a fairer, prosperous, and more sustainable food for future for all. The ambition for this event is to showcase the high quality produce and is industry leading technology here in the UK and from our partners around the world. But there are problems the world needs to address. This event is the time for us all to come together and find solutions to the biggest issues affecting our food source 
including sustainability, decarbonisation and climate change. This is the platform to bring together businesses, key decision makers and governments to discover opportunities for partnership and innovation, for sustainable growth and looking around the room and those joining us virtually, we have everyone we need to bring about real change. Joining us today, we have leaders, business innovators, global partners, decision makers, and governments from around the Commonwealth, all coming together here in Birmingham with the bold ambition of change and progress. I would like to thank UK House, the Department for International Trade, the Food Foundation, the Commonwealth Association, and Birmingham City Council for enabling this prominent an instrumental event to take place. Today you will have the opportunity to explore and engage with key discussions such as cities, cities leading food system transformation, African women transforming food systems, India rising and the Birmingham food revolution. There are a whole host of exciting and key decisions taking place. Later today, all delegates will have the opportunity to unite and sign the Birmingham Food Justice Pledge, where we have the power to collaborate and recognise and address food insecurity, and acknowledge that all our citizens, irrespective of status and entitlement to safe, nutritious and sustainable food at all times. Tonight we will come together to watch the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. But today marks another momentous occasion. We are all here today watching the beginning of a food revolution around the world. And it does start now. Thank you all very much. Wow. Hello, folks. Good morning to you all and welcome to the wonderful city of Birmingham. So lovely to see you all here. Um, I'd like to thank Anna, Keith and the Lord Mayor for that introduction. Uh, my name's Leila Kazim and I'm delighted to be your host for the whole of today. And I have to say there are some incredible talks and discussions going on. We've got a great lineup. Before we begin, I'm asking for a show of hands. Raise your hand if it's the first time you've ever been to Birmingham. Yeah, quite a few of us. And how great is it that we are here at such an incredible, exciting time during the Commonwealth Games? Um, so what are our objectives for today? We, we, we want quite a lot from you guys. What we want you to do is we want you to talk to each other, connect, get details, find out what other cities are doing. Um, I came into this world just a few weeks ago. And in that time, I have learned about all the journeys that the cities have been on from the Milan Urban Food Pact Policy. Have I got that acronym in the right order? Yes from 2015, which started. And then the Bindi partnership between Birmingham and Pune, 2016, Food Cities 2022. And as I've been learning and reading about all this stuff, it's sort of culminating in this event today, which for me began last night, where we had a dinner, where a lot of the delegates were at. And it really gave me an opportunity to start putting faces and names, you know, people, IRL, as the kids say, which stands for in real life, in case you weren't aware. Uh, seeing people in real life after having seen their titles and their names, and that had a, a big effect on me. So I can't imagine what it's like for you guys who have only been seeing each other in meetings and on online conferences for you all to actually be in this room today and seeing people, I, I can hear uh, lots of excitement earlier about, oh my God, it's so nice to finally meet you. Um, so we really want to sort of capture that energy 
and use that today when you guys get to connect with each other. So our objectives. Our objectives today are really to mark the next stage of Food Cities 2022. We want you to speak to each other. You'll have an opportunity to meet funders, to meet potential partners, and to also find out the progress of the city so far. So who do we have in the audience? We've got about 80 Commonwealth country guests. And what I want you to do is if I say the country that you have traveled from, I want to hear a whoop. And I want to see who, which country gives the biggest whoop, right? So we got some people from South Africa. Where are we? We are not here. OK, yes, come on. Yes, Vuyo, whoop for down here. One person down there. Yeah, thank you. Namibia. Yes, at the back, representing Bangladesh. Yes, there we go, Samaya, nice to see you. Hi. Uh, do we have anyone from India? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. OK, excellent. Uh, we've also got funders, academics, city network organisers. We also have many of the Birmingham team. Birmingham team, are you in here? Yeah, there we go. Uh, who are, of course, leading this city's strategy. Um, I myself came up from London yesterday. It was a quite leisurely, very nice three-hour coach ride. Decided to take the coach rather than train because there's a train strike. But so many of you have had such longer journeys and we're just so uh, delighted that you all made those journeys to be with us. So thanks so much. So today, we are encouraging you to speak to each other, to learn from each other, build new relationships, and we want you to be inspired to go further and faster in your own city. It's all about engendering an atmosphere of curiosity, of learning, communication, celebration. We won't be doing Q's and A's at the end of the sessions, but there's plenty of networking opportunities, so do use those opportunities to seek people out. We've all got name tags and do connect and chat. And I think it's worth saying that up until this point, a lot of the meetings that you guys have had over the years have been quite top down. But today, it's actually the cities themselves which are going to be on the stage and the experts in the audience. And I think that's quite exciting. So for our first session this morning, I'm quite delighted to welcome Dr. David Nabarro, who we are extremely lucky to have here with his team from 4SD. As a public sector, as a public health doctor, and subsequently in senior leadership positions within the United Nations, David has spent his career navigating complex global system challenges. His promotion of food systems that nourish both people and planet contributed to him being awarded the World Food Prize in 2018. His role as senior advisor to the 2021 Food Systems Summit led to over 100,000 people from across the world convening 1,600 Food Systems Summit dialogues. And it's these dialogues have opened new paths to addressing the systemic challenges facing our food systems today and they're currently being used to transform the national development strategies of over 60% of the countries that participated. Now, David said at the dinner last night, he, he gave a very lovely speech to us all, but he also said that he is here to listen to you and he wants to find out what you're up to. So do please seek David out in the networking moments. And without further ado, I'd like to present Dr. David Nabarro. Thank you very much indeed, Leila, and gosh, it's great to be here. Um, Minister, Lord Mayor, Minister, lovely to be with you all. And uh, this is um, a room full of MIPs. You're not VIPs, you're MIPs. Massive impact people. And it's just for the next 15 minutes that I want to talk with you about what you are doing and what I believe you will be doing more of in the months and years to come. First of all, I'm convinced 
that effective work on food is the key to helping societies and the world to deal with the challenges that we've got coming ahead. I belong to that group that says if we get food right, we get the whole of the sustainable development agenda right. And that if we get food wrong, we will not hit the sustainable development agenda targets at all. Food connects people, food links people to the planet. And so when we are talking about food, we're talking about people and the planet, and we've got to get them both right. And last year, as you heard, we had a food system summit that was organized by the United Nations Secretary General. It was the first time we've ever looked at food as a systems issue in a UN conference. It's jolly difficult, actually, because when you're looking at something as a systems issue, everybody sees it differently. And it's that extraordinary variety in understanding of food systems that means that if you want to change them, you can't just bring people into a room and blast them with PowerPoints and say, you've got to shift down this route or that route or else you're going to mess up. Uh, actually, all that does is it leads to terrible tension. And we saw that uh, during the food summit. We had a huge boycott by a lot of civil society organisations who said, we don't like the way you're organising it. We don't like the starting position of this summit. And so they walked out. I take a different view. I don't think you ever change systems by instructing people to follow a particular line or to start from a specific starting point. Instead, you have to create the conditions under which they're ready to shift. And those conditions involve inclusion. They involve respect. They involve trust. And they involve space for people to debate and understand how systems need to shift. But those of you who are working in giant cities and who are trying to do this with your food work also know that the change doesn't go in a nice linear direction. You've got political challenges, you've got institutional challenges, you've got groups who won't get on with each other easily. And so it's a very often a task of coaxing, creating the good spaces, and then ensuring that there's enough trust for movement. It's not the same, actually, as most of the current adversarial political exchange that happens in the social media or in broadcasting. Real life is not about adversarial action. Real life is about creating those spaces for working together and doing it in a way that takes account of the challenges that different groups face. That's why Eat Right India is so exciting. I was just talking to Inoshi. How many cities, I said? 108. That's amazing. And they had 11 winners. Congratulations to the winners. But what matters to me is those 108 cities are millions of people who are learning through food about ways to act for a collective future that is equitable, that is sustainable, that is resilient, and that has meaning. Johannesburg, Durban, Windhoek, Nairobi, different cities in Malawi, not all here because of visa challenges, but goodness me, what a lot of energy we're bringing. And then Birmingham and Milan, thank you for coming. It's the cities that create the energy that leads to political change by national governments. Fiona is here from WHO. We know from looking across the world how cities do it. Justin, that's right, isn't it? Absolutely. And so let's celebrate that. This meeting of massive impact people is actually an opportunity for spending the time to come together and to compare notes and to think, how can we have even greater impact and how can we do it without 
making a great deal of noise in the headlines, but using social media, using our networks, using our connections, creating a narrative that has meaning, we bring about change. Just a little bit about massive impact people. What are they like? Incredibly motivated. Persistent and not giving up. Absolutely thriving on connections, particularly connections based on curiosity, your point, Leila. Connections with unusual people, talking to those you don't actually like because you know that that's the way you bring about change. Talking to those you even have a different ideology from because that's how change happens. Staying inside your own bunker, your own space, no change at all. Building those connections, change happens. And we've watched it, we've seen it with your city work, we've seen it with the food systems dialogues, and we're watching things evolve. Now, just last point. This is quite a difficult time for our world and for the people in our world. I'm part of a thing called the Global Crisis Response Group set up by the United Nations Secretary General in March because the combination of COVID-19, climate change, cost of living increases, conflicts, and particularly more recent conflicts in the Black Sea region, all are combining to create a situation where prices are rising, farmers are suffering, food is getting more expensive, energy more expensive, living more expensive. And all of you in your cities are feeling this really seriously now. Because as things rise in price, as wages and incomes, the amounts that people can earn stay constrained or even reducing because of COVID unemployment, the actual cash that people have with which to buy food decreases. And we're seeing already levels of malnutrition, particularly among women and children throughout the world, are on the rise. We're seeing migration on the increase. We're seeing more and more farmers having to stop producing. We worry about forthcoming availability of quite a lot of key food items. Please, as you do your city work and as you're helping people to handle this cost of living crisis, recognise that what you do at the city level can inform governments, can inform societies about how to weather this. And I'm sure that you will show the rest of the world what has to be done. I shall be listening during today for examples of what you can do to help weather the crisis and enable people, cities, nations to emerge stronger and realise the goals that we all work for, the sustainable development goals that are key to our common future. That matters for our children, for our grandchildren and for their children. They are the targets of our efforts now. It's not us, it's the generations to come. Thank you very much indeed for the chance to speak. Thank you so much, Dr. David Nabarro. Um, wow, so key things I took from there, the connection between food, people and planet, and that change isn't going to be linear. And uh, I think this was quite important. Cities, it's the cities that create the energy that lead to national change by the government. Thanks so much, Dr. David Nabarra, and also for the valuable contribution that you've done to this work.